Hello, my name is Tom Morgan. I'm a Teams MVP. And uh, I want to do a really quick video today just talking about the web app bot. Um, so this is a bot that you can write. Um, it's something you create in Azure and uh, you can then use it to um, interact in Teams. So Teams is one of the channels supported by the bot framework. I've talked about this kind of extensively in the past and um, I've done talks and workshops um, and I always start off by saying it's really easy. You just go and create a web app bot and you download it and you can run it locally and do all your changes locally and then publish them. And that's mostly true, uh, but I've been called out um, by, um, uh, by someone who uh, just kind of said, well, actually, it's not as easy as you make it sound. And that's true. And it's kind of changed a little bit in the past couple of months. So um, I really wanted to address that and just kind of go through um, some of the changes and, and just work through in real time the, um, the process. So this is going to be a kind of a completely unedited uh, recording. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through if we get stuck, if we hit road bumps, um, I think that's useful. It's useful for you to kind of see the process I go through as well, partly because then you know that it doesn't always work first time because that's definitely true. Um, and also that's the reality and like hopefully we'll learn something along the way. Okay, so let's just be completely open about the stuff um, I've done up to this point. All right, so I have, let me just start my uh, screen share so you can see uh, what I'm seeing. Okay, so this is, what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I've created, a web app bot. Um, so you can do this yourself in Azure if you go to create a resource and if you search for a uh, web app bot, it's this one here. And the only other thing I've done, if you look when you create the bot, you have access to a number of templates. Now you used to have access to more templates because there were two different versions of the SDK. It was kind of confusing. So they've taken away the old one and left you with the new one. Now this um, is the source I think of a little bit of the confusion. So I created a new Echo bot. Okay, so the Echo bot is quite good and I use it in all my kind of demos because it creates a bot straight away that just works and just echoes back um, anything you, you give it. So I created one of these, I clicked through OK. Um, the reason I did it and I'm not doing it kind of on the call now is just because it takes a little while to, um, to create those, um, to create that resource. So let me just go and show you what it created. Um, I'm just going to have to go and find it. So I created a new resource group called Simple Bot. And within that, you can see uh, the bot here, the web app bot and the app service. So when you've created your bot, you'll come here. You can do a test in web chat and you've probably seen me do this before. So um, all I do, all this does is kind of in browser. It's a good way of just making sure that everything works. So you can kind of say, type whatever you want at your bot and all being well, it's just gonna return, it's gonna say hello and welcome and return that to you. Okay, so this is the point at which I say, you can go to the build tab and you can download this bot source code. Now this is useful to do if you're um, gonna be making changes locally. So if you're gonna take this template and build on it, you probably wanna go here. You can also use the online code editor, but if you're making more than just trivial changes, you probably do wanna do the download. So um, in the interest of time, so I didn't make you do this on the call, I have done that download. So um, what you do is you click that button, it thinks for a bit, and then it gives you a link to download and it downloads a file that looks exactly like this, the zip file on the end. And that's as far as I've got. Oh, the only other thing I've done. So when you do this locally um, and you run your bot code locally, um, you can use what's called the bot framework emulator um, to emulate your code talking to the bot framework. I've done a video on the bot framework emulator previously, so I'm not gonna go over that, um, but this is, I'm just gonna let you know I have it open and running and I'm gonna be using it in a bit. So. What do we do with this downloaded code? How do we get this working in Visual Studio? Well, first thing, we need to extract it. So this is just a zip file. So using whatever tools you want to use to, to unzip it, you can use the built-in Windows one or do what I'm doing. We get a whole load of stuff here. Now, the one to look for is this echobot.sln. This is a solution file, okay? This is um, what Visual Studio uses to hang everything else together. 
you could also go to Visual Studio and go open solution and navigate to this folder and you'd find this. But this is the file you want to double click and open. I'm going to assume you've got Visual Studio or Visual Studio code. I'm going to use Visual Studio here. Um, I think either would be fine. It's just um, I'm more comfortable in Visual Studio because I'm old and that's fine. Like if you're more comfortable with Visual Studio code, then use that instead. Um, a lot of what I'm going to tell you is almost certainly applicable as well. So Visual Studio is going to open. It's going to take a while um, because it's a big application and my machine is getting on a bit. Um, but as soon as it's opened, um, I'll let you know. So it's still splash screening on the other screen. Um, so here we go. So it is opening up now, but it's opening up on the wrong screen. So as soon as it's ready um, and as soon as I can, I'll bring it over onto this screen so you can see it. So we'll just wait a second. Um, we keep talking rather than, I don't want to edit this video too much because uh, otherwise it feels more like smoke and mirrors. I'd rather you get like the full experience of, um, of what it's like in real time. Okay, so we're opening up. So this is what it looks like as soon as it's open. So you can see all the things up and down here. There's a little, um, that's a warning triangle on dependencies. And that's probably because this project, this project uses dependencies from uh, NuGet. Um, so you get a package manager, um, and so the code will say, I, I am referencing this package here. And actually, you haven't got that package on your machine. The nice thing about NuGet is that it's going to do all that stuff automatically for you. So actually, you can see uh, down the bottom, it's actually doing a bunch of stuff already. It's installing some things for me already. So I can right click on this, on this um, project. Uh, or is it the solution? Let's find out. Uh, yeah, so if I right click on the solution, I can go down to restore NuGet packages. Okay, that is going to go through the project in my solution, figure out where the dependencies are, and make sure they all exist. And I do that, and it says here, well, actually, they're already all installed, and that little icon's gone away. So, first things first, can I build this project? So, right click on this on the Echo project, on the Echo bot project, and click build, and we'll see what happens. So it's going to think about it. This might take a while the first time. Um, you're building it for the very first time. Um, and it comes up straight away and says, build succeeded. So that is all relatively positive. If your experience is different from mine at this point, this is probably a point to stop. Um, and there's no point kind of going any further. Ping me. Let me know what the error message is. I'd be interested to know. Um, I might do like a follow up um, kind of troubleshooting of different sections. All right, so the next point is, well, it builds, can we run it? Now, running in Visual Studio is up here on this, it's called the play button, maybe some people call it. Um, it's got the little arrow, and I'm just going to click and click go. I'm just going to see what it does without changing any kind of defaults or anything like that. So it's going to go through and output and spin, and lots of things are going to happen. And it's opened up a command line over here. Okay. And it's also opening up a web page. And that says, your boss is ready. Um, so this is a useful page to go to. Um, so it's a useful page because it tells you a couple of things. First of all, it tells you that you are seeing what the developers of the bots wanted you to see. It looks like a page they'd want you to see. And that's probably a good thing because it probably means everything is working. At this point, you can take uh, this value here. It's telling you, you can test it in the bot framework emulator. It gives you a link to download the emulator, um, but it tell it's telling you you can do everything and you can go and pop it straight in the, um, in the emulator. So I'm just going to do that now. And we'll just click go connect. And it's going to want to save it somewhere. So let's do that. Now we can say hello, bot. And immediately you see nothing happens. We see couldn't send. And we see this error message here Can't, cannot post activity unauthorized. Now, the reason it's unauthorized is if we come back to um, our bot here, the endpoint up here that we typed in right click and go edit configuration. The application ID and an application password. And it says they're optional. And it's true, they are optional. However, 
when they're not optional um, is uh, when they exist in the code, but then they, if they exist in the code, they need to be in the framework. So if you can leave them out of the code and then you can leave them out of the framework emulator, but if they're in the code, they, you do need to include them. So uh, we need to go find them in our echo bot. We need to go and find where they are and they live in app settings. So if you double click on app settings to JSON, you'll see here there's an app ID and a app password. So I'm just gonna take this app ID and I'm gonna paste, I'm not, I'm gonna come back and let's try that again. Oh, not now Visual Studio. There we go, right, so let's copy that and paste it in there and let's do the same with the password. Paste in there and click submit. Uh, run this again. Wait for it to load up. Again, we get this uh, command window pops up. Takes a little while each time, but it's kind of loading all the stuff it needs and getting it all up and running. Um, okay, and now it's now listening, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's probably going to open that web page again. And if you're not careful, you can end up with quite a lot of web pages open. Um, because each time you run it, it's going to open this core bot sample web page. Wait for that to load because that's a good indication that everything's up and running. And then we can come back to the emulator and we're going to click restart a conversation. Um, that's a good way of kind of resetting everything. Now that we've put the new app ID and password in, click reset the conversation, say hi. Think about it. A long time. <laughs> so you might see this as well, like the first time you kind of start interacting with your code, it may, might be quite slow. Um, there we go. Eventually, actually this kind of timed out, it said couldn't send, but actually it has worked. Um, it just took quite a long time. And if you are now, if you now do it again, you should find it's, it's much faster. Um, it will always be slower than in production because doing debugging locally will always be slightly slower. There's more going on. Um, now that you are debugging, you have quite a lot of options to do things. So um, if I come over here and just, I've already done a couple of videos and, and things where I walk through what, how this code works and what it does. Um, but if we just come down to um, the bit where it just echoes out what you say, and I'm just gonna put a breakpoint on that just because I want you to see um, how useful it can be being able to write this code locally and test it in the emulator locally. So if I now just send another message, see immediately it's going to stop on this breakpoint. Now, coming back to the emulator, nothing is being sent back at this point. It's still waiting because we've stopped at this point. The code has stopped and it's stopped, but it's still running. So what that means is we can look inside all of these things. So we can look at um, you know, what turn context .activity .text is, you can see there the HHHH, the, the message that we sent. We can also look at activity, we can drop open this little box. Um, and you can also then look at all the properties inside activity. Um, lots of these are empty. You'll find with the emulator, quite sometimes, you know, a lot of the identity stuff is empty, like the channels they come from, like you see, you've got a client activity idea here. And a channel ID is just set to emulator. It's not the channel of um, you know, the team or the you know wherever else it's coming from. You can see the recipient, you can drill down to all this interesting information. Um, and you can do all that whilst the code is still running. You can also make some changes. So uh, this may or may not be a change you can make. Um, but I could change this to say you said, like so, and then run this. 
when I do that, come back to the emulator, that message that now comes back is you said. Now I did all that whilst the code was still running. So that's quite powerful. Um, you can't do that all the time, but Visual Studio will tell you when you're doing stuff that requires you to actually stop running the code. It's just a slightly faster way of making small changes whilst the code's still running. You might have just notice something and now you want to carry on. Okay, so this, at this point, you've downloaded the code, you're using it, you're running it locally. This is a great kind of jumping off point now to go and take the sample and, and change it and make it something different, make it what you want it to be, um, add in your kind of business logic and the things that make it interesting for you. All right, it's kind of a quick video. Um, I hope it's been useful. I just wanted to cover some of those basics um, just because I've, I've had a couple of questions about them. So let me know if it's been useful. Also, let me know if you get stuck at any point in that process. Um, if you see error messages that are different and don't make sense, kind of reach out. I can't promise I'll be able to fix them, but if, if I notice something, I'm happy to kind of clear it up and clarify because I know it's really frustrating. I've had this in the past for sure. I still get it now, um, you know, where you watch a video and, and that it works flawlessly for that person. You're trying to follow along and you hit these weird road bumps that are just not mentioned. So I, I get that. So um, shout if if you kind of hit these road bumps and, and I'll do what I can to, to kind of help you get over them. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Loads more videos at portstuff.co.uk slash video um, or follow me on Twitter and I will speak to you soon.